Encyclopedia Britannica Educational Corporation presents a study of human life, the occult, mysteries of the supernatural. Witchcraft, magic, sorcery. These ancient supernatural ways to explain the unknown we now call the occult. In the not-so-distant past, it was widely believed that certain people could communicate with the dead, cast spells, and foretell the future. Today, many still believe that we have hidden and perhaps extraordinary powers. Reports of strange new energies and means of communication puzzle and fascinate us. Scientific experiments are now underway to probe such mysteries as extrasensory perception. Hello, I'm Christopher Lee. Like many of you, I have often wondered whether devils and demons, witches and warlocks, really exist. If there are people who do have psychic powers, and if there really is life after death. More and more people are asking these questions and are daring to explore one of the true mysteries of the unknown, the occult. Many of us only experience the occult through horror films, such as The Legend of Hell House. ancient beliefs from the past. When many people thought that natural events were caused by evil spirits, witches, or demons, this traditional occult belief in the supernatural has not disappeared. Today, many people still fear the most evil of all spirits, the devil. portrait of demonic power is seen in the movie The Omen. Here, a priest engages in the traditional struggle of good versus evil. A dark night, flickering lights, chanting witches, a perfect vision of evil. But witches are not necessarily evil. They are simply believers in an ancient religion which predates Christianity. To protect themselves from persecution, they formed secret groups or covens of 13 members each. Here we see the fascinating ritual of modern day witches. What is the password? Perfect love and perfect trust. Those are the correct words. I welcome you in the name of Diana. I purify you from all anxiety. I purify your mind to think of her. I purify your eyes to see the goddess's way. Blessed be. Blessed be. While there is no evidence that witches have supernatural powers, they are still feared. For it is known that some witches worship the devil and practice black magic. These witches, however, do not. In Nosferatu, we 
we see one of the earliest movie versions of the vampire legend. Vampires do not exist, but like many occult beliefs, they symbolize our deep fear of death and the unknown. figures were once held responsible for many of life's most frightening experiences, death, disease, and madness. Ancient beliefs and ancient images continue to exert their power, for there are still many things science cannot fully explain. I believe that astrology is based on science. It's based on astronomy, which is mathematical calculations. But just like anything else, it's an art. The 12 signs of the zodiac are the most familiar symbols of astrology. The belief that the position of the stars at our birth affects our character and our future. For thousands of years, astrologers advised kings and generals and thereby influenced many historical events. Even specific parts of the body are thought to be connected to the stars. To peer into the future is an age-old dream. And though science has not shown astrology to have any basis in fact, millions still read their daily horoscopes. Psychic powers in astrology are related just like psychic powers are related to everything else. Um, I think that the whole human race is becoming much more psychic, but it certainly means that um, astrology is a lever into the subconscious. Dr. Sir speaking. Oh, Hi, Dr. Hi, Dr. I have come, and I am going to work with many of you today. There is a tremendous amount of work to do on Earth. Oh, yes, Doctor. There is going to be a terrible uprising back and forth, back and forth. This is an explosion. Like astrology, communication with the dead is a traditional occult belief. This woman is a medium. In this seance, she is attempting to contact spirits who, she says, speak through her to friends and relatives. A seance is often very dramatic, but how do we know that the voices we hear are really those of the dead? People sometimes let their own wishes color their judgment, especially on such an emotional subject. Hello, Snelt. <laughs> Hello. Why don't you tell the people who I am? Well, it's my mother, and the reason I know is because she called me by a, an unusual pet name that she used to use when I was a little boy. It's S-N-I-L-C-H. It's called Snilch, and I've never heard that word anywhere. But my son, mm -hmm. there are many, and there are many waiting to come through. Fine. Can the dead really speak to us, or is it just an illusion? There are sometimes other explanations for the apparent success of a seance. If ghosts do exist, and some people are convinced that they do, what would they be like? Would they be friendly and talkative? Or would they be troubled, even angry? Next, from the movie Legend of Hell House, you will see the horrifying power and destructiveness of an enraged spirit.
ghosts are often violent, quite unlike those reported in real life by pianist Maxine Bell. She says she is frequently visited by the ghosts of several long-dead composers who dictate music to her. Whatever the explanation, the music does sound strangely familiar. I started hearing a full symphony orchestra and I wasn't able to shut off the sound and it was playing music in the style or the idiom of Tchaikovsky and all of a sudden a materialization of this man uh, appeared and uh, I was very very frightened he just asked me if I would mind stopping what I was doing and take down this piece but I have never had any training whatsoever in composition. And I said to him, why don't you give this to someone more experienced, someone who has mastered orchestration or composition, why give it to me? He said, no, because you're a more sensitive receiving set. When I began to feel so hopeless after four or five hours of continuous writing, he just wouldn't let me give up. He just worked right with me and he says, I will help you. And he just continuously helped me. I hear this music continuously. Every week I bring through more music of Brahms, more of Tchaikovsky, more of Chopin, and I don't know of any greater proof that life continues after death. I hope you're in a good mood for the experiment. Great. Despite all the stories, there is still no conclusive evidence that ghosts exist or that there is life after death in any form. Scientists, however, are beginning to examine this subject. In this experiment, a man is placed in a small enclosed room. He is going to try to send a part of himself out of his body and into another section of the building. There, a test has been prepared to see if he can make out a series of figures on a small revolving disc. As soon as you got your target ready, just holler and I'll get set from here. Target number one is ready. Fine. Okay. Is it target number one? Is ready for you. Take a good look. Okay. I'm breathing now to form the light. My other body is taking over. Thousands of people have reported out-of-the-body sensations. As this man describes leaving his body and floating down these corridors, we get a sense of what this mysterious experience may be like. My body, my second body is there now. I am now at the box, looking in. Ready to tell us what you see? Lower left hand. The success rate of some of these tests has been better than mere chance would allow. Clearly, there are many questions about out-of-the-body experiences which are still unanswered. Uh, the thing that happened here is not a materialization as in a seance. What happened here is a bilocation, which means I was at two places at one time. Now, that might be quite scary to some, and usually when somebody gets out of the body first time, he's scared stiff. But if you start to ruminate and think about it, it gives a joy. To me, it is certainly the step toward survival after death, if I can be at two places at one time, therefore, that other thing that is outside of there has to exist after death. It just doesn't die away with the body. So I think it's a step, a step made towards that direction. Scientific experiments like these could someday, one way or the other, prove if there is life after death. In the meantime, many ordinary people are searching on their own. They are concerned with the mysteries of the mind. 
the power to heal the sick, to read people's thoughts, to move objects by psychic energy. Some even believe that that power is already there within us, just waiting to be tapped. What we're first going to do is we're going to join our hands over and under in this method. We are balanced, yin yang, male, female. Take a deep breath. This gets the system going. The people in this group are discovering abilities some of them never suspected they had. Sitting under pyramids, which they believe increase the flow of energy, they are learning that with enough concentration, they can actually bend the spoon. You feel it become loose. I think it's still going. Still going. Yeah. With one hand, it's just enough to get confidence. Okay, take the other hand and you can go ahead and manipulate it. This power may be no more than the combination of a warm spoon <laughs> and a strong thumb. But like many who have an experience they cannot explain, these people find an answer in mysterious psychic forces. Is it extrasensory power? What or it really is, is it the focusing thinking? of all the energy within the body? The only purpose, remember, for this spoon bending is just to allow an opening, a conscious opening, by which you can see for yourself the energy manifesting. You feel like the energy flow from your, from your hands that go, you know, just energy. It's energy that you can feel, it feels like rubber, and you just push it down. Right now, when I feel like it's, I'm not ready for the bend, I can push and push with this strength, and I don't get anywhere. But when I feel it ready to go, it gets soft, and, and it's like I'm directing the energy to that one area. I feel it's the same energy that we can direct in healing. I mean, what's the purpose of bending a spoon? But it's the same type of energy we can direct towards healing and towards many other what we call psychic abilities. It's just the inflow of the positive energy. These energies are here in every place for you to use it. It's just a matter that you learn to be a channel for these energies. Faith healing, which has been practiced for thousands of years, is still widespread. And in a surprising number of cases, the laying on of hands actually seems to work. Of course, doctors know that for many illnesses, believing you will be cured is the best possible medicine. Some faith healers, however, say that they actually transmit healing energy into the sick person's body. Using a process called Curlian photography, scientists are now trying to take pictures of this psychic energy. In this example, part of a leaf is cut away. When the larger part is charged with electricity, an aura or outline of the entire leaf can be seen. Whether this aura is a form of energy or simply the result of the electric current is still being debated. Perhaps the most exciting research is being done in the dramatic field of ESP, extrasensory perception. Mentalists and others have long claimed the ability to read people's minds. Now, scientists are actually testing people for telepathic powers. As the subject relaxes, the scientists monitor her brain waves. Soon, she will try to receive a mental image being sent to her by someone hundreds of miles away. Ellen, can you hear me? I'm ready to go. Okay. Just think out loud. Describe whatever is going through your mind. All right? <clears throat> there's a, a lighthouse, sort of on a jetty. Yeah, there's a microphone. Looks like it was during the 40s. The scientist picks four slides, 
one of which is the picture that is being sent to her. When the woman returns to the control room, she will look at each slide and compare it to the images she received. My first image was of a dome-shaped lighthouse, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It was my very first image of fish. Mm -hmm. She looked Benny. Oh, these are hard. These are very hard. A train. My first choice is the lighthouse. The windmill. <laughs> 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 My science foundation. Dr. Broad? Yes. Uh, okay, Ellen has done the judging. Uh, which of the targets was it? It was number 560. 560, Jack Benny. Jack Benny. Well, we had a miss. I thought about Jack Benny. Did you? Yes, in the 40s radio thing, television radio thing. Despite some failures, Experiments such as these suggest that we may indeed have extraordinary powers of communication. The occult continues to fascinate us because of the natural human desire to understand and control our world. We would all like to know what lies beyond the grave, why evil exists, and whether we have supernatural powers. In times such as these, when people feel powerless in so many aspects of their lives, the occult is particularly appealing. But as science unravels these mysteries, what seems incredible today may be commonplace tomorrow.